Let's take a look at Palantir stocks. It's especially relevant now since the company is poised for a breakthrough and further growth. We will discuss what might happen in the near future and I will show you the market forecast for Palantir. The earnings report is coming soon so we will also analyze volatility. There are many interesting indicators to consider. Let's start from the beginning. As we can see, Palantir has made several growth spurts recently. The first one occurred almost a year ago when Palantir rose by 200%. After that, there was a consolidation phase for almost six months. During this period, Palantir fluctuated and then it grew by another 60%. This increase happened after the earnings report. Now, Palantir has been fluctuating again for almost half a year, and there is a possibility that it will continue to consolidate in the near future. However, after the earnings report, Palantir might start to rise again. Let's touch on volatility and then I'll explain in more detail where the stock might go. As we can see, volatility remains stable at around 30% to 55%. Why such a range? Because volatility varies on different dates and expirations, which is a characteristic of options. This is an absolutely normal situation. The closer the expiration date, the lower the volatility. This is related to the anticipation of the earnings report, as no sharp movements are expected before the report. Options do not predict sharp movements before the report which leads us to conclude that similar fluctuations are likely to continue until the report. However, after the report, volatility might spike, indicating that Palantir could either rise sharply or fall sharply. With that clarified, let's look at the volatility smile. As we can see, the volatility smile for nearer strikes and expiration dates is inclined both downward and upward, meaning both put and call options are increasing in price equally. But if we look at longer expiration dates, we will see that volatility increases mainly in the direction of the stock's decline, meaning towards a drop. This is also a normal situation because investors and traders who buy stocks hedge their purchase shares by buying put options. Consequently, volatility will always be higher for put options, and put options will be more expensive than call options. This is a normal situation. Now let's look at historical and implied volatility to see what is happening there. As we can see, the white line represents implied volatility, and the gray line represents historical volatility. Currently, they are roughly equal, which is normal, because implied volatility tends to revert to its historical values. I also remind you that you can trade not only the stock itself but also volatility. In fact, trading volatility can be more convenient because there are reference points to which volatility can return. Let me immediately show you an example of how to trade volatility, so I'm not just talking in vague terms but showing practical examples. We can set certain parameters for artificial intelligence, and it can develop a few interesting strategies for us. Let's say we assume that volatility will increase by 15% by mid-August. Let's see what strategies the AI comes up with. One of the strategies suggested involves selling a call option with a strike price of 22, buying a call option with a strike price of 25, buying a call option with a strike price of 26, and selling a call option with a strike price of 29. I must say that this strategy is quite complex as it uses different strikes and includes the sale of call options. However, it is interesting because it provides potential profit both upwards and downwards, though limited. Nevertheless, if Palantir's price moves significantly in either direction, we can make a profit. Here is a comparison of how this strategy looks compared to other strategies. I showed you this strategy purely to understand how to play on the growth of volatility. I certainly do not recommend opening any options positions without a thorough understanding of their structure. Let's look at the support and resistance levels. We see significant resistance levels for call options at the $26 mark. This level is very challenging. We tried to break through it a few days ago and failed, and we also couldn't overcome it in March. This resistance is largely due to the heavy presence of call options at this strike price. This resistance should not be underestimated. Additionally, we have strong resistance at the $25 level. This is also worth noting. Moreover, we have substantial support levels for put options around $24.25 dollars indicating a fairly narrow range where Palantir might trade for some time. Again, breaking through the $26 resistance level seems unlikely without a significant event such as news or increased trading volumes. The upcoming earnings report, which is due in a month, could serve as such a catalyst. Thus, the hypothesis is that we might continue to consolidate for a while and then break through these significant resistance levels around the earnings report. However, the opposite could also happen and we might see a drop. I noticed something interesting after the earnings report in May 2023, the stock rose significantly, as I mentioned, by hundreds of percent. Then we had a few reports during which the stock consolidated, followed by another increase, and now we have been consolidating for a few reports again. The next earnings report could potentially push us to higher levels. But I emphasize my philosophy in trading I do not know where the stock will go, and I cannot predict price movements. 
My main task is to manage positions wisely. This is the essence of my approach. I do not rely on technical analysis, but rather on forming sound strategies. Let me show you one of these strategies. Let's look at one strategy if Palantir starts to fall sharply, for example, down to 10 dollars, we can still make thousands of dollars. This means that regardless of the stock's direction, we can profit from it. If we increase our position, the profits can be significantly higher, especially during a sharp rise. This strategy, though complex, uses different options and strikes and requires active management. It's not advisable to just open this strategy and hold it without management. You need to know when to close options, open new ones, sell and hedge risks appropriately. I wanted to demonstrate the logic of how I manage positions. It's important to avoid the risk of uncertainty by developing and executing a well thought out strategy. By doing so, we can mitigate risks and uncertainties, which is key to successful trading. Now, let's look at the market forecast, which is very important. The market uses all available information prices, reports, financials, news, and research to make predictions. For instance, by August 2024, the market predicts that Palantir will be in the $23 to $25 range, similar to its current level. This indicates that the market does not foresee any significant changes before the earnings report. However, if we look at the forecast for the end of the year, specifically December, the market anticipates a slight decline with Palantir trading between $22 and $23. This is a small decrease, suggesting that the market currently has no significant expectations. This slight decline could be within the margin of error and volatility. This uncertainty likely stems from a lack of information, which will change once the earnings report is released. Finally, let's examine Palantir's financial metrics. According to some evaluations, the company is somewhat overvalued at the moment. It has significant margins, but its operating margin is only 10%. Other metrics show extreme values, such as a P.E. ratio of 200%, which is quite high. As we can see, very significant growth rates are forecasted for this company. Although it has been unprofitable all this time, it became profitable in the last year, which is a positive development. We can also look at the cash level and debt level, which I find very appealing for this company. The cash level stands at $3 billion and has increased by $1 billion over the year. The debt level has not grown at all, which is very significant. Fundamentally, the company is very strong, and this is certainly encouraging. Additionally, there are no stock buybacks, but there is some additional issuance of shares, likely due to the exercise of options, which can be overlooked. Financially, there are promising aspects to this company. Ideally, we would like to buy it at a lower price, but it is hard to say while the company has not made a significant leap. However, the company has serious growth potential, possibly reaching $40 to $50, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So, if you are a long-term investor and believe in this company, it is safe to invest. The stock may drop, but if you are a long-term investor with confidence in the company, you can simply hold on to it. The most important thing is not to use large amounts of leverage. I also remind you that I have started a new experiment, a portfolio from scratch. I invest and show which stocks I buy and why, with complete transparency. The account is as real as possible, and I show you exactly which stocks I purchase and how I will manage the portfolio. If you have any questions, write in the comments. Good luck to everyone.